Hi everyone, Francesca with Cornerstone Fitness and Health, and today's form focus is all about the lunge. I think the lunge might be the most dreaded lower body exercise ever. And I don't think it's just because it happens to be an extremely challenging exercise requiring immense core stabilization and balance, but I also think it's because a lot of the times it gets the bad rap for a bad knee exercise, right? Don't lunge if your knees are bad, just don't lunge. But here's the problem with that, and you might know where I'm going with this if you've been watching a couple of these already. The lunge is a functional exercise, everyone. I hate to break it to you, we can't just cut it out. Because think about it, how often are we in this position? This is a split stance position, right? This is a lunge position. Quite often, we do things in this position. Think about going to pick something up off the floor, right? We do one face up. Oh, I'll grab that, right? And then think about getting up off the floor. A lot of the times when we're seated on the floor, right, we'll go to get up, we'll put one leg forward. Well, that's basically a lunge. So whether we like it or not, we've got to figure out how to properly perform a lunge because we can't just cut it out. It's just not practical. So let's look at, one, why do we have problems with lunges? Why does it hurt our knees? And I used to be one of them. Oh, I've had bad knees. I've blown my knees out in, in sporting. I, I can't do lunges. Well, you can't, because I do them all the time now. I even wake up, and I don't have a problem with my knees at all. So let's look at what's causing our knee problems or our back problems. Part about not liking them just because, well, they're challenging. I can't help you with that. You're just going to have to form a love-hate relationship with it. Sorry. But the reason our knees hurt from lunges is form. It has nothing to do with the lunge in itself. Unless you have biomechanical issues, guys, if you've got something, you've got a tear, you've got a sprain, there is a biomechanical injury in your knee, then you're not doing them. You're going to let that injury heal, or you're going to work with a physical therapist or a doctor in helping them. But by and large, if yours and me is healthy, there is no reason why you can't lunge. So the reason, again, that we hurt our lunges hurt our knee is because we're doing them improperly. Our form is off. So what are the two elements that we need, sometimes three, to have a proper lunge? One, shocking, core engagement. We need to have that core engaged. That was that first leg of that tripod pedestal table we built, right? The second one thing we need is a proper hip hinge, just like a squat, okay? Those two elements are in every version, every type of lunge there is. You need both of those. Core engagement to protect that lower back and a hip hinge to properly load the legs. If we don't hinge, we end up driving forward when we lunge, right? That knee goes way forward. Now all my energy, just like a squat, is directly in to my knee. Of course my knee is gonna be angry and start to be in pain and it has every right to be, all right? When that hip hinge is in place, now all of a sudden, my quad, my glute are loaded, they're doing the energy and the work, my knee is stabilizing, all right? So regardless of what type of lunge we do, core's engaged, we're gonna work on that hip hinge. Now if we load it, right, we're carrying dumbbells, all of a sudden, now we need that scapular mobility, stability, and strength, otherwise we curve it, okay? We're not going there today. But if you are weighing your lunges, better make sure those scapular are there, there with you. So to knowing that, right, core engagement, hip hinge, I'm going to give you a great exercise to practice before even starting a lunge, okay? Then I'll go over a prep setup for a lunge, and go over three of the most popular type of lunges and go up their form and setup. So you have everything covered to go about your very little way lunging all about. So the favorite exercise of mine to teach people how to lunge properly is a step up. So you're gonna need, once again, either a sturdy step stool, a low chair, if you've got one, if you have a bench, even a curb work, anything that's gonna get you elevated just a little bit. So make sure you have that handy and that it is stable. Because I know we covered the step up when we talked about hip hinges, but today we're gonna to talk about it in terms of muscle activation. We gotta get the right muscles doing the right job. So if you can do a step up, you definitely can lunge. Because a lunge is totally easier. The 
you're getting your body weight up on a step up. Okay, so I would suggest don't make your step up as high as mine. Make your step a little lower to start out with. We're really just trying to get that mind-muscle connection going. So find yourself a step, and we're going to, with control, lift our left leg up and place it fully on the step. So make sure that your heel's not hanging off. You need your full foot on that step. And then the first thing we're going to do is engage that core, right? Belly button draws in and up. The second thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that I'm evenly planted in my foot. Heel, outside edge, ball of the toe. And I'm gonna push down. And then I'm gonna transfer my weight to this left leg. Right leg's not doing anything much. Just kind of a kickstand so I don't fall over, right? Then I'm gonna hinge into my left hip. Yep, felt my glutes turn on. If I don't, right, I'm gonna re-hinge. So I've loaded the foot, my core is engaged, I'm evenly putting pressure to my foot, hinge my hip. Now, I'm going to squeeze my glute and come up. Once I'm up, I'm gonna pause. I'm gonna reassess. Core is engaged, evenly weight in my foot, hinge my hip, feel my glute. Now I have to step down with equal amount of control, hinging into that hip, carrying the load with the quad and the glute, and lower down. Right? You're going, why is this similar to a, a lunge? Because in a lunge, I'm just doing the same thing. It's just not as hard. So let's go over it again. Like I said, if you can perform a step up, you've got your lunges. Right? So we'll do it with a different leg this time. Go with the right. My foot's fully on the step. Evenly planted. Core is engaged. I'm going to hinge into my hip, feel the glute, transfer completely. Notice that my knee, if I pinch my hip, is staying directly over my ankle, right? If I don't hinge my hip, this is what happens when we step up, isn't it? Oh, that reminds me. Huh, climbing stairs, another lunge. Just saying, right? So if I don't hinge that hip and I go here, all that weight, right, is driving forward, directly into that knee. All of a sudden, I hinge that hip, locks in here, squeeze the glute, and I'm coming up, right? Or a little over. Rehinge, step down with control, and off. Okay? And so you'll just keep practicing, right? Get yourself set up. Squeeze, lift, pause, reassess, rehinge, lower with control. Doing step up that way allows you to, one, get your glute involved in lunges but shares the weight evenly with your quadricep. Once you know you've got those involved, you're not feeling the pressure in your knee, then let's set it up on the floor. And the way I'd like to do it first is just to set up in a static split squat stance, right? Feet are staggered. We're gonna start right here, right? And you're gonna have a good wide enough stance so that you're on the ball of that back foot. And then, you're gonna do exactly what you did in your step up. I'm gonna square my hips face forward, shoulders are down, core is engaged, and the evenly placed weight in my heel, outside edge of the foot, ball of the big toe, right? I am going to hinge into my left hip. Woo, good, I felt it turn on. Then I'll bend, drive through this heel, come back up. I can switch legs, I can go this side. Split stance, from the balls of the back foot, my hips are squared forward, my core is engaged, I'm gonna hinge into that front hip, I can feel the glute turn on, bend the knee, squeeze that glute, evenly push through the foot, drive through the heel, come up, okay? And you'll practice that. Use a wall, folks, okay? If you're feeling off balance, you're working on your balance and your core stability, there is nothing wrong with having a little support, right? And help yourself out. Mind is a powerful muscle. It is the most powerful muscle in the body, okay? So if you feel shaky, even just that pinky on the wall is sometimes enough to give yourself that confidence to do it. So use what you've got. A chair works too, okay? But practice that form. Nice staggered stance, okay? Ball back foot, core is engaged. Transfer weight, hinge hip, and come up. Doesn't have to be as low as me, work with it. Right? This is as equal of a lunge as that. Go where you feel the muscles, proper muscles working. So you've mastered the step up, you're confident in your split squat lunge. Let's go over three of the most common types of 
some lunges. I'm going to review a reverse lunge, a forward lunge, and then a lateral lunge. There are a million other types, but if you remember, core engagement and hip hinge, you will be able to perform any of the lunges out there. So a reverse lunge, and I always start with reverse lunges because they're a lot easier than a forward lunge. So with that reverse lunge, you're gonna pick which leg you're gonna do first. I'm gonna go with my left. So just standing here, I'm immediately gonna transfer that weight to the left. So much so that I might come to the ball of my right foot. I've transferred the weight, I've engaged my core, I'm evenly planted through my heel, outside edge, ball of a big toe, and then I'm gonna hinge my hip, making sure that now I feel that really great connection in my glute and my hamstring on the left leg, and then I'm gonna send that left leg back, lowering down into a lunge. Nothing saying that you can't step back, pause, make sure you get out everybody, and go down. Come back up, right? Do it from this angle. I'm gonna transfer the weight, core is engaged, Evenly distributing the weight in my foot. I'm gonna hinge into that right hip, feel the glute and the hamstring. Send the left leg back, lower into my lunge. Keeping the weight all in this right glute. Drive through the right heel, come up. There is no weight on that back leg. It's a kickstand, folks. It's just there for balance, right? Very little weight. We're going back, we're coming up. We're going back, we're coming up. In the beginning, it's not gonna be that smooth, okay? It's just not because we're not used to transferring, hinging, keeping this quantum moving parts. It will. Give it time. Go slow. Allow this muscle to catch up with these muscles. Okay? They will align. Right? So one last one before we move on to forward lunges. Transfer the weight to your dominant foot or the active foot. Hinge the hips. Send the leg back. Squeeze the glute of that forward leg. Drive through the heel. Come back up. Switch legs. When we talk about forward lunges, things get a tad bit complicated because the natural motion is forward, right? Therefore, we tend to drive that energy forward. And that's where we get in trouble with that knee diving over that big toe or over our toes. So when I teach forward lunges, you go slow, really slow. I hate to say it, but you do, because we gotta give our body time to adjust. So when we're doing a forward lunge, you're gonna take a giant step forward with one foot, landing softly from heel to toe. You're gonna pause. You're gonna square your hips. You're gonna engage your core. You're gonna evenly plant through the heel, the outside edge of this foot, the ball of the big toe. You're gonna hinge your hip, and then you're gonna lower down. You're gonna come back up, keeping the weight on that front foot, drive through, and come back to standing, right? Because if we rush this, right? This is what ends up happening, guys. Watch my knee, woo! It's going way over my toe. I do that enough, and my knee's gonna go, excuse me, that doesn't feel so good, okay? And it's my fault. I was rushing the movement. I wasn't doing things precisely and with precision, all right? So, take a giant step forward. Again, look at my placement, hinge, come up, okay? And that forward leg is doing all the work. Drive, come back up. One more time. Step forward, hinge the hip, lower down, squeeze that right glute or the front leg, glute of the front leg, press back, okay? Biggest thing with forward lunges, use the entire foot of the working leg. Yes, you may be driving through the heel to activate the glute, but don't let those toes pull back, right? We have an entire foot, let's use it. You're far more stable on your entire foot than you are on just your heel, okay? So drive through the heel, but place pressure evenly throughout the foot, and that takes practice as well. All right, that last lunge, that lateral lunge, such a great lunge, right? It works not only the thighs and the glutes, that little abductor glute medius part of the glute too, it's phenomenal, but it gets a little tricky, right? Now we gotta move sideways and I gotta hinge and we get a lot of things going on and we even get a little adductor on that straight leg. So let's set it up and I'm gonna definitely do this in multiple planes of vision for you guys. So I'm gonna start with the side version first 
and my right leg in this is going to be the one doing the work. So I'm going to be stepping out to my right. So where it gets tricky is, I have to lift this leg to step up. So I'm going to transfer the weight to that left leg, core engage. I'm going to take a huge step out to my right, and I'm going to pause. Okay, this is how we learn it. I'm going to now transfer my weight to the right leg, hinge my hip of that right, keeping the weight centered, knee over ankle, core engaged. So all the weight is now on this right, squeeze and press through that right heel, come back to standing. All right? So, weight's here. Stepping out nice and wide, hinging into that right hip, pressing through that right heel, come back to standing. All right, we're doing over here towards you. All right, core is engaged. Transfer the weight, big huge step out, hinge into that left hip, opposite leg is straight, weights in this glute and quad, squeeze the glute, press through the heel, come back up. One last time, All right? Transferring weight, big step, hinging hip, lowering down, squeezing, coming back up. Your lateral lunge. It's a mix between a lunge and a squat on one leg, folks. It's great exercise, but yeah, it takes some balance, it takes some stability, it takes some thought, right? The hardest part of that exercise is we can't check out, folks. It's when we get in trouble. You gotta be in it. The good part about that is, when do you ever get a full, name your time, how long your workout is, to yourself and make it only about you? Your exercise gives you that chance because you gotta be present with yourself. Hell, oh, that's 30 to 45 minutes all about you. And that's a great thing. So don't check out, don't make your grocery list. Be present in your body, right? For lunges, let's recap it out real quick. For lunges, we need core engagement and we need a proper hip hinge. To do that, we're gonna make sure our, our low back is safe and then our glutes, glutes and, and quads are doing the majority of the work, not driving through that knee joint or anything else, right? We use the step up as a means to practice that mind muscle connection and engagement to lift us up properly. We use a static lunge to practice the movement and then we add motion to the exercise, right? In the form of a forward lunge, a reverse lunge, and a lateral lunge. And any other lunge variation you can think of, the myriad that are out there, curtsy lunges are one of my favorites, right? So, remember, core engagement, hip hinging, any lunge is possible and important because we want to be functional for a long time through our life. As always, my friends, I hope this was helpful. I hope you learned something. I hope you brought a little peace of mind for lunges. I know I was always so afraid to do a lunge because of all my knee issues in the past. So I hope it brought you a little bit of peace of mind. If there's anything else I can do, guys, please leave me a note. I'm here to help in whatever way I can, and I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, my friends, blessings.